Hello, it's time to do some really weird toy views once again, and yes, I gotta tell you what, this is the third toy view of April 2021, after a long hiatus, for at least around three weeks, maybe four weeks, if you can actually remember that one, of course. And if you remember, the last time I actually did a toy view was in the 7th of March. And I gotta tell you what, that is almost basically the one month of basically not doing any toy views after that date. And I just can't believe it, it's been so, so long, and, I mean, it is bloody long, though. You guys just to wait for a new video to be made. So, yeah. Well, anyways, in this video, I'm going to be taking a look at something completely and utterly awesome. And today, it is Easter Sunday. So, happy Easter, everyone! And, um, hopefully we might take a look at some Easter-themed toy reviews. Because last year was a shocker when the pandemic became a major aspect of what we had in the world last year. And yes, this was also the main reason why I did not make any Easter time series products in 2020. Of course it was 2020. I only said this year being 2021. But luckily enough, since we've got Easter products to start off with, I'm going to go ahead and show you what they are. In fact, I actually make them during college, I think I actually made them at college though, during my time at away at, from home though, which is going to be quite interesting though. It actually is a little tiny piece of paper there. I don't know what it is, it looks like, yeah, it's been falling down to the track, so anyways. And um, I don't have that much space. Um, I don't know what I might do, I'm just move that chair away. Eh? can't see the chair though because the camera is facing towards where the train layout is. And uh, I might go ahead and bring this to like so. So, obviously, we've got some Easter 2021 themed products. We've got, ooh, it looks like a dude. Get out of the train, you're disrupting the whole video though. Disrupting, actually. Anyways, here we are. This is a flip out origami British Wildlife Collection. Easter 2021 toy comes with a red fox versus Easter bunny rabbit fluff. I think fluff is basically a group of rabbits or bunnies, what we're going to call them. And it's a five pack. And it also says the word Warren. Oh god, stupid train has just basically got the whole freaking video, eh? Get out of here! Get out of here! You're just disrupting the whole video. Anyway, it says group Warren five pack. Sorry about that one, eh? Uh, I should have just turned off the train, but, oh my goodness me, for that started, eh? £8.50, that's how much this price, that's basically the price of how much that this toy costs. And there's the back of the packaging here, oh my goodness me. Best before the 17th of April, get out of there train, you're blocking the hole! Oh my god, eh? This is embarrassing, but anyways, here we are. As you can tell, the packaging tells me that there are four different colours of bunny rabbits there. And yes, they're best before the 17th of April. It's an Easter 2021 themed product. Actually, that white one looks like a hair somewhat, eh? And as you're saying, if you remember that novel or story, it's all the the hair. Well, there's your saying, slow and steady, with the rice. And that train's taking over the whole video again. But anyways, I've got some lovely daffodils at the bottom right here. That, you know, everyone tends to like about daffodils, eh? But anyways, I'm just going to go ahead and unpack this. I don't know how good or bad these Easter time products are going to be like, though. And I think it's going to be mainly highly associated with bunnies, though, because, as we all know, just because an Easter egg came from a chocolate bunny... Oh, my goodness, please. Actually, speaking of that chocolate, this bunny rabbit here, in brown though, looks very chocolatey, which is interesting. And just because a bunny rabbit laid eggs doesn't exactly mean that's very truthful. It's just part of a German sort of fairy tale, I believe though. There you go, there's the pink nose on the front there. I don't know how cheaply designed these bunny rabbits are, basically design eh? Just denote ones obviously though. And um, yeah, lovely mouth be coming in design eh? Um, I don't know what I might do, I might leave this light out a bit though, because I want to go into a section where I don't want to get taken over by a train though. So here we are, there's a brown chocolate one. Looks very delicious to eat though. Mm -mm -mm. Has anyone tried rabbit meat before? Oh good, we're going to eat Bugs Bunny. 
that's the other thing I would have loved to say, eh? Yeah, there's a grey one there. Okay, it looks quite nice and fancy looking there. Not sure why, but time's taking over the whole video, eh? Yeah, it does look quite nice, that bunny rabbit there. Obviously. All of them have got white buffy tails there. On their behinds there. Nearly, I was going to say. Oh yes, I've got a bit of a joke, eh? What would you call a bunny with a very, very bad looking butt? A dairy hair! <laughs> oh yes, get it? Because, you know, dairy hair and hair. That's quite a very weird butt. Oh my goodness, man. Butt joke, so that's so weird, eh? And the train's about to derail there. That's why I've just moved the webcam just a bit further away, eh? Okay, we've got like a yellow looking rabbit there. Sadly, these toys don't have licensing info, which is very disappointing. But, um, yeah, it looks quite nice and gold looking, eh? In terms of its colour, you know, hue and appearance, eh? It's just quite interesting, eh? And the ears, you can just stretch them out and just make them look real. And we've also got a white bunny rabbit there, the archetypal white Easter bunny rabbit there, eh? Obviously, that looks, well, quite mundane looking, but kind of cool and cute at the same time. Yeah, looks very, very nice, eh? And one of the most asked for animals in my whole life is this fox. And what's very interesting about this fox is that it reminds me of Tails from Sonic the Hedgehog because look at that head. Look at that head, it looks like Tails. And you know, from Sonic the Hedgehog there. And uh, it does have a combination of you know, what Tails would look like in the Sonic games and what a real red fox would look like there. And obviously, just because it's a red fox doesn't exactly mean it's going to have blue eyes. Very weird anime style mouth design. And the foxy looking tail here. I don't know if it's like a bushy tail or something like that one. It's quite a very nice looking, you know, vulpine looking creature. Vulpine looking fox. As you can tell. It's got those grey feet. At, you know, we can see down there. And it's free. Yeah, it doesn't look too bad. And also, as a bit of trivia, this model has actually been folded with A3 paper just to make the fox a little bit more larger than those bunny rabbits here. Although, by saying that otherwise, let me just, if I grab the bunny rabbit there, you can start to see a bit of a, a show, sort of, I don't know what I'm saying, a, a size sort of comparison there. I was tied up fox, was trying to basically reward at one of the bunnies. Well, obviously there's that product done. I mean, I could have put into a lot of effort there and a little bit of thought into it though. But the Warren theme onto it though makes a lot of sense. Well, it does make a lot more sense whenever you think of foxes eating bunny rabbits though. And um, yeah, quite very interesting obviously, eh? Very interesting. And then we've got a fire pack. It's a small horde of bunny rabbits. It just comes with only bunny rabbits minus a fox. It only comes with just five bunny rabbits. With one bunny rabbit replacing a fox. And we go to this 2021 green product with those lovely daffodils at the back there. It comes with five different colours. Okay, so it looks quite, quite nice. Okay, we're just going to go ahead and unpack this. And uh, it's not just the other colours of bunny rabbits, though. I'm just going to take a look at those. It's not just, you know. Well, obviously, it's not just those colours here. I'm also going to take a look at, ooh, wait, hang on. It's, uh, maybe these two, I don't think I'll take a look at these again because they just look exactly similar to the other part of eye. But look at this yellow looking rabbit, this looks bright. And it's also got a bit of a, um, that's very strange, it's got a bit of a very different head design. Which is quite weird, eh? On that sort of Easter bunny. And I kind of like how bright and colourfully yellow that critter is, eh? Quite amazing. Very, very amazing of all times there. I just can't believe it. Very, very cool. Yeah, it's got grey lines with the facial details and design. Oh, it looks like this guy has got scratchy. I can't even stand up that well. How weird is that one, eh? But, um, yeah, that looks quite nice actually, eh? That kind of bunny rabbit. Once again, we've got the buffy white tail at the back side, eh? And then we've got a. Oh, this one looks a bit of like. Wow. <laughs> oh yes, that looks quite menacing looking at Bunny Rabbit. And it also comes in a different shade of brown. Last time I looked at it was more of a darkish milk 
chocolatey sort of brown looking rabbit. This one here is just reddish brown or rufous looking, obviously. But done it with pencil. Thank you enough. And then, yeah, looks quite weird. I have to continue with the train now. Because a train just went past by right at the middle section of this video. Eh? You know, I'm, I'm actually saying is that, you know, whenever I'm holding stuff though, the train will just come towards my arm and just disturb my video production or the time or distract with me. And, funnily enough, there's an orange rabbit here. Luckily I didn't make 12 of these guys, eh? Because if I make 12, it will be an absolute nightmare, though, eh? And, um, luckily enough, I just can't believe it, eh? Funnily enough, I... That looks incredibly orange, eh? I often say that, you know, bunny rabbits with that colorization like that. I think that that's very nicely detailed. Very, very nicely detailed. And, um, the facial designs look awesome as well. It looks quite cute. With those eyelashes there, in the cutting, it's a female rabbit. Uh, but in the packaging there at the back, this more male, which is very misleading. But nevertheless, we've got a female orange rabbit, which looks quite nice. Very nice indeed. Well, there you go. There is two Mr. 2021 themed products done here. I also love the fact that comes in different Easter egg designs though. And actually the logos look pretty much different though. Some of the text colorizations and also the Easter egg colorizations look pretty much detailed in a very different way though. If I bring these two products there, you can just start to see how exactly different to the way I make Easter products like so. Why? You can start to see the logos here, they look therefore quite different. But if I turn up the back here, they just look almost um, exactly the same though. Almost exactly the same. If I hold this one here, obviously the number one looks like it's coloured in orange because of the rabbit's fur though. And if I hold this one here, it almost looks exactly the same though. So it's, and also the letter R looks a little bit much more of a light brown sort of colour, eh? Which is kind of interesting, eh? Right? See it again? There you go. Easter 2021. How did you go wrong? But anyways, I'm just going to go ahead and catch up with something a lot more magical and actually sort of themed, I believe though. We're going to be taking a look at... Ooh, I think it's a Fruit Love Origami Ponies product that is actually desperate to be unpacked though because... Look at this. It's starting to unpack already though. And this one here is called the Miscellaneous Pegasus Flocking Hood 12 pack. And I gotta tell you what though, the brownies are starting to, well, research once again now after the show has been, well, discontinued. Obviously I want the show to continue, eh? If only we can go ahead and make things back to normal, eh? But, um, yeah, I just can't believe it, eh? That's quite a very weird depiction of those cartoon looking My Little Pony character there, the splash eye here. And there's quite a lot of various ones I really kind of know of. Rainbow Shine, Sasha Flash, and um, I can't remember, is that Sunshine Raindrops? And there's Twilight Bum Sparkle <laughs> on the letter O. And there you go, there's the back of the packaging here. Look at that, we've got, oh, we've got, oh, who's that new character? Is that Bonnie Dash? You know, whenever I think of this character, it looks like Rainbow Dash, but also a lot more edgier though, and a lot more less colourful like, or zombified. Maybe it look like, I don't know, maybe Daring Do, I believe so. But I'd clearly indicate that because she's got the lightning bolt uh, as, like, you know, on the Thunder Cloud Cutie Mark, well, she looks more like a ripoff of Rainbow Dash. <laughs> there's Derpy, and there's some of the other characters, Sprinkle Medley, and. Is that Cloud Kicker? I think that Purple Pony, though. I'm gonna find that. Alright, I'm just going to go ahead and, ooh, there's a bit of info here. Not all ponies shown as artwork. Very interesting piece of artwork or reading though. Anyways, there you go, here come the ponies. All of them are out. And I'm just going to go ahead and, you know, go ahead and discuss every single pony as a piece of hair. Maybe hair from China, I believe so. And I'm just going to go ahead and take a look at the ponies. Here we go, we've got Bonnie Dash, which is basically, um, obviously I've made a one up for the fact that it's 
quite cool. She looks very nice and dark green looking now, emerald green. There you go, there's her name on the bottom. There you go, it looks very, very nice, funny that. Lovely tail design. And what's quite funny is, is that the mane and the tail have actually been detailed by a, a small black pen, which has actually taken quite a long time now to detail toys like that one, eh? There's the cutie mark here. And there's the very distorted and weird looking face, anyway. And speaking of distorted, I can tell you what, last year for many school children and kids as well as teenagers who have lost their chance of getting into school, it feels like that 2020 has been a distorted yet contorted year for many people though. And I've got to tell you what, it's been hard for people to basically search for jobs back in 2020. Yeah, but anyways, there's Bonnie Dash here. Oh my goodness me. I'm going to the other side here. Yeah, so it looks quite quite nice. We've also got this pony here. Whose name is that? I can't remember. I think that is Sun Shower Raindrops. Obviously the same design as Bonnie Dash, but also a lot more weird in design there. Obviously you can tell by the main style and whatnot though. Yeah, it looks quite interesting, eh? Yeah, so I actually forgot to name this pony a Sunshine Raindrop, which is pretty weird, eh? Maybe there might be a name here somewhere, there, eh? But, um... Oh well, I might do that at the end, eh? Now this one here is... I think that pony is... It's got some beautiful wings there. If I bring in Bonnie Dash here, you can start to see that the wings are actually a lot more... Obviously different, they're actually a lot more straight looking though, compared to just diagonal. Just the normal diagonal shape of a Pegasi wing, or Pegasus wing. And there's the umbrella there, that's that, you know, it's quite strange though. It looks almost pretty distorted looking cutie marks though. And that tail, quite a bit weird though. It almost looks like it's shonky or something eh? And there you go, there's the main. There's the little face. And there's her name, Parasol. Very important to check from, you know, what we have there in those pony toys. Gotta to have these names though, you know. Bet you there'll be more in the future, eh? Just making loads and loads and loads of Marvel Pony themed toys. Here's this one here. This is... Oh, I remember this one here. It's called Orange Swirl. As you can tell by the Tornado Cutie Mark and also the hair stylization and things like that one eh? and to take what we have here orange swirl but she's also named as dizzy twister or maybe it's dizzy twirler i can't remember her name right but it looks quite nice though the main looks pretty much the same and the other side too uh, looks quite quite nice the tail and the cutie mark of the trio of tornadoes and that face it looks beautiful, I mean crikey, that is quite amazing. Very, very amazing, eh? I might have to just go ahead and just, you know, fill that packaging up with super glue on the upper me, please. You know, sealing area though, just to make, you know, the product is like, you know, just fresh and not too, I would say, dilapidated. Maybe the same with incorrectly though. Here's Derpy, this is Derpy Hooves, who basically has got the same design as Rainbow Dash. But a lot more crazy and hilarious looking there, there's some bubbles here. I believe some old pony fans would literally nickname this pony as Muffins or Dipsy Doo. Obviously for the fact that she works at a muffin shop. And there's her name, Derpy Hooves, I'm not sure if you can see that, but there you go. Derpy Hooves, oh yes. I've seen, you know, pop figures of this pony before though, and um, yeah, Derpy has become like an internet meme for the fact that her cross-eyed looking appearance, you know, gave way to the name of Derpy Hooves. And uh, if I bring in Bonnie Dash, she's actually a lot more shorter, and if I bring in from nose to toe though, she's actually a lot more shorter than um, Bonnie Dash, which is quite interesting, eh? In fact, I've actually made another product about Bonnie Dash. Uh, I might get into later on though. Here we are, is this pony here. I've made this one before. This is Mary Mo. I think I've made her before on a previous Flip Pony's 
Shmuli Vi'ay, Egeres, Naimi, Marimai, Vervay Nois. Also has got flowers there for the fact that in May you have flowers. And obviously she's named after the month May. Which is quite interesting, eh? Pink mane, in two different shades of pink. There's her eyes here, which look quite amazing, eh? Quite amazing looking pony. I have to say, it looks quite amazing when you see a huge variety of different pony characters, right? Eh? Okay, so that's Mary Moe. And White Lightning, obviously, um, you can tell by her, you know, her mane and the hairstyle and the tail. She looks very, very cool looking, eh? With that thunder cloud attitude onto the kitty mark. There you go, it looks very, very nice. And there's her name on the side here, and very neatly enough, this is one of the only ponies actually made of white paper. Because, unlike the other ponies, they just fold it with grey paper though. Uh, something like this will show here, this kind of like ivory grey. I can't remember the name, it's silvery grey. Highly, you know, colourless silvery grey. And uh, which looks quite interesting there, and also that towel is on and white lightning, it looks so so unusual but it looks so so good at the same time, eh? I love it! I love it a lot though, eh? And we've got this pony here, is that Cloud Kicker? Yes, I've got the name correct, eh? There you go, there's the name. I'm trying to show the name here, there you go, there's the name Cloud Kicker. And if I fold her back, what she would be normally like, there you go. Oh yes! Cloud Kicker! There you go, we've got the cloud and the sunshine here. That's the key mark. Obviously in the same shade as the other Pegasi ponies I might take a look at and Twilight Bomb Sparkle. <laughs> I why I could have said Twilight Sparkle, not the bum on it, eh? Quite weird, eh? And um you know, the tail looks a bit dud looking there, but no, that's okay, eh? That's quite interesting, eh? Um is that Rainbow Shine? I need to say Rainbow Dash, eh? But it's quite a very different looking character, though. And I've got to tell you what, though, in the Mall of Pony franchise, like, various different characters, though. Very, very weird character names. And my, oh my god, my feet and my legs are starting to ache. Because I've been sitting there, oh my god. I feel like I'm just crossing my legs with agony around me, driving me. Um. Does she have the name Rainbow Shine? Let me just take a look what we have. Yes, she only has that name on the front though. And just have a look. Oh my god, my feet and my legs are aching ow! Anyways, give me a second, let's take what we have. Let's see what we have that one, I. Eh? Oh my god, I don't know. Oh my god, it's, it's quite hard though. I know mean, it's got the rainbow cutie mark though. It looks so so different to what other ponies are like, especially Rainbow Dash. Very weird tail. And from what I can work out, the mane looks very very similar to um, Orange Swirl. There's the other side. Look at those fantastic looking eyes. And let me show you the name properly again now because other people are saying, Oh, I mean, you show the name correctly though, when you're having a whole bunch of agony with your feet and legs. Well, there it is Rainbow Shine. And we'll take a look at Fluttershy next. Obviously, for the fact that she's already a model pony character though. And uh, I've chosen her for the fact that, you know, there was someone else who looked like Fluttershy though. And uh, there's, there we are, there's the name Fluttershy, here we are. Very cute, haha. <laughs> and um, yeah, you can see the, um, the cutie mark, also the mane, and also the tail. Whoa. Lovely design indeed, I can't believe it obviously, eh? And also I love the wings. But I don't think that the wings look quite, you know, sloppy looking though, but they just look so, so nice. Just like every Pegasi pony, you know, is obviously like though. Next pony character here is this one here, this is... Is that Sasha Flash? <laughs> oh my goodness me, I think I've got the correct shade of... Um, blue, obviously it's turquoise aqua. Cyan looking, obviously, and uh, names on the front there, obviously they Sasha Flash. Actually, it's called Sasha Flash, not Sasha Flash. Sasha Flash, Sasha Flash. That's how I know that pony, eh? Yeah, it's got a yellow looking mono, 
and the tail. And also the cutie mark's got a couple of lightning bolts there. And same on the other side here. There you go. Looks quite fancy looking, obviously, though. And last but not least is Sprinkle Midley. And this pony here actually has one fault though. It's got nice rainy cloud cutie marks though on both sides. Okay. Also same tail design as White Lightning Day. But can you see a problem with this pony? Can you see what's actually wrong that should not be inhibiting? Uh, it's actually got a rip, it's actually got a hole. If you look closer, there's a hole here on that pony. I might have to do like another back. So maybe feature a product with Sprinkled Midley, but try and fold it carefully next time, eh? Um, it's a bit of a disappointment though. But uh, nevertheless, it looks quite cute. Also, the eyes look quite... They look pretty daunting in these eyes, eh? I mean, what's the worst with that pony toys of the day, where the eyes become a lot more smaller and sort of looking quite haunting, actually, eh? I and mean, I mean, if you look at a real horse, eh? You know, their faces, they do look quite nice to look at, though, but at the same time, they do appear quite scary, though, especially when people dress up as, you know, horses, though, for Halloween costumes, so That's how I remember, eh? Right, that's that product done. I've got another of the black ponies toy on the wing here. Oh my god, I'm going to But, um, I think I've got another product about Bonnie Dash, which is going to be this one here. And uh, if I show you what this one is, ooh, it's called the Wonderbolts Female Mare Squad 5 pack, and it costs about £7.95. And once again, this product features Bonnie Dash. Which is quite amazing though. And it's also based on the Wonderbolts. You know the Wonderbolts people of My Little Pony, I believe though. The Wonderbolts Academy and blah blah. The only thing I can get all of these references and you know, on our favourite childhood TV shows back in the 2010s decade or the 2010s decade, whatever we're going to call it. Eh? I'm just busily fitting all the Pegasi Pony onto the 12 pack packaging. Which is going to see a whole bunch of better days there because I bet that packaging is not going to like on how I've treated the whole freaking product oh my god oh my god oh my god, oh my god. I, I do feel quite a bit guilty on how I treat my that product well so I you know they just don't work out as they are planned to be eh? so, I think that's something else right alright let me just go ahead and take a look at this product here. It's a Generation 121 product. Which is quite interesting, eh? I don't know why, but uh, I don't know why it's Generation 121. Because we've seen Generation 121... You know what I'm thinking of? Generation 121 tends to have like the original Flip Up logo, which looks like that. Now we're seeing Ash Ketchum, but on female style logo, so it's just quite weird, eh? That's a pot pack, £7.95. There's the back of the packaging here, it looks more pony esque, you can tell by the artwork there. And they've also got names of different characters, this is Fleetfoot. And also this character here, she is named after the war winning British aircraft, the Spitfire. Quite amazing, eh? Very amazing little time though. And um you go ahead and see what they look like. Actually that character here on the right though looks pretty original. I'll just go ahead and, yeah, let me just go ahead and take all we have. Ooh, it's going to be quite nice on a bit of shock, right? And the webcam looks like it's trespassing on the train tracks. Just going to let that train be well, right? Let's hope not. Okay, let's take a look at this Bonnie Dash here. Ooh, look at that! The only difference with the... With, oh my goodness, look at the main detail. It looks very, very nice. The detail, and so is the tile at the back there. It looks very, very nice. We've got a plane at the background there. Actually, it's right behind me there. Uh, but look at the eyes though, the eyes look a lot more, how would you say it, a lot more eye-catching. <laughs> no pun intended. Yet again, we've got the name Bonnie Dash, hooray! I gotta tell you what, it looks very, very nice. Very, very nice little times I love the wings. Lovely wings, and you've also got the mane. Very, very nice mane, of course, eh? I think the eye is a lot more visible. If I bring in... I don't know if I can try and make a comparison here. If I bring in the other body dash, we can start to see a major comparison there. This one here, actually, it doesn't actually have like actual triangular wings. There. There's a bit of vertical in this. 
on the line today. But if I bring in this one here, um, this one here is a little bit more. I suppose that one's a little bit more longer than that one there. I suppose though this one is a lot more, well, a lot more visible that you can tell straight forward on the detailings of the pony and things like that. Eh? It looks so so nice and visible to look at, eh? You know, Bonnie Dash, obviously, there. It looks quite nice, actually. This looks very, very nice. I love how very interesting I am. This is what the eye is. There you go, that's Bonnie Dash. And this one here is basically, um, I think this pony's name is called Surprise, going by the key mark day. And actually, the name Surprise actually is like, you know, whenever I think of Pinkie Pie from Mall and Pony of Aurodo, this pony character here was supposed to be Pinkie Pie. Okay, so, w when the show was first created, they, they originally was going to be using, like, you know, Surprise as a replacement for Pinkie Pie. But, nevertheless, it's quite nice though. She looks nice at all times. And obviously, if I take a look at her name though. Oh, look at that, look what it says at the back there. Surprise Pie! Maybe for the fact that Surprise is closely related to Pinkie Pie. Very, very nice, I would say, eh? If you can tell by the tail and maybe the big boopy hair, it's missing in action now, sadly. But, um, yeah, nevertheless, it looks quite nice, though. And what's quite funny about surprises is that she doesn't have any speaking roles. As I might expect, though. Next character here is... Ooh, let me just take a look at this character here. Uh, I've no idea. I think this one here is... I think I've known this character before, though. Maybe not. This character is called Lightning Dust. Quite amazing, the Pegasus looking pony there. It looks quite, quite nice though. Pretty much cuter and a lot more friendlier than those dragons are. And uh, there you go, there's the other side here. Very, very nice. Obviously showing the same design as those dinosaurs I make though. There you go, there's a lightning bolt and the stars blowing out. Lovely, lovely detail and design on lightning dust. She's quite an amazing looking pony. And all these characters are female. It's looks quite interesting though because, you know, ponies are regarded as toys for a female looking audience though. Apart from the fact we've got bronies which are like men who love girls toys so much though. Especially ponies. And this one here is Spitfire, I believe so. She's got a very fearsome temper though in the show though. Often, you know, having with a chip on the shoulder though. You know, there you go. There's her name, Spitfire, named after the very, very heroic and a lot more awesome looking war winning aircraft that we all know in the UK. Yeah, that looks so, so amazing. Eh? There's a bit of, bit of, what would you say? There's a bit dirty looking though, but um, it's not as scruffy as the other pony models I tend to think of. Eh? And also, I love her eyes. Very, very visible and vibrant looking eyes. Quite crisp looking, the colours though. And we've got this pony here, I think that's Fleetfoot. If I take a look at, right at the bottom there, often the names can depend on where they are though. And actually the name is here somewhere there. Can you see the name? Here you go, there's the name Fleetfoot. Um, yeah, there's a cutie mark. And there's the other side, it's in the shape of a horseshoe, both sides obviously, eh? And uh, there's her main detailing and design. She's also got eyes which look quite small. Um, can you see it though? No, maybe you can, maybe you're not. Uh, it looks quite cool, eh? Very, very cool little times, eh? Lovely indeed. Lovely designer Fleetfoot indeed. I can't believe it, I obviously think now those pony designs, they look quite, quite nice. And, um, yeah, I just can't believe it, though. But, let's move on to birds, and also a bit of fish activity as well, though, because, well, let's think of something completely and utterly invasive, right? Uh, but I do have a funny feeling, I've got tons of that product, so to take a look at, eh? And I don't know what to do with that at the moment, though, but, um, you know what I'm thinking of, right? It's going to be quite tricky, I don't want some of you different about toys. Ok, next product here. This is like origami. Um, it's a British Wild Fortune toy. King Scallop Color Variations 5 pack. And there's the price, £6.50. 
Here's the back of the hand if you need it. It's just a lazy looking to that pilot with not oh. much detail in there. Apart from that, we've got some scallops or shells I'm going to call it now. But, um, looks quite nice, so I'm just going to go ahead and unpack this. If I'm lucky, I might be able to do a car pack of these shells. Ooh, they look quite amazing, eh? Pretty perfect for a rock pool setting. It looks quite nice, eh? There you go. Yeah, very nice. Now, I don't often eat shellfish that much though because I'll be very shellfish. <laughs> Get the pun, eh? I mean, thank you for not being shellfish, guys. That's another great pun, eh? Why am I doing puns though? I mean, we've just gone past, you know, freaking April Fool's Day and... There you go. Lovely yellow scallop. There is a... Is that a brown one? Looks like it's all done with scribbles. Oh my goodness me, it's something like a five-year-old who would literally create and just colour in the whole model, eh? That sort of art that I kind of showed in, it feels like someone who's like... That's so weird, eh? Whenever I look at scribbles like that, or the way things have been coloured in, it's like a child has been done it there on purpose, eh? But, um, they are quite nice, though. I just can't discriminate for the fact that they just look like, you know... For the fact that there's children do colouring go down here, for the fact that, you know, it's just like the way children used to draw things and colour on things. Yeah, that's actually quite nice, eh? There you go. Very nice scallop details, eh? I just can't believe it. That looks very, very cool. I wonder if we've got any more for that part to take a look at, eh? Um, yeah, I think we do. We do. Otherwise, I'm just gonna. Put these scallops back away because um, I think I've seen enough of these. It's very interesting, eh? It's a little bit like these um, starfishes and the seahorses I had a look at recently, though. Off you go. Next product. Oh my goodness me, bloody seagulls. And once again, oh wow, this product here is called the Fish of Origami Flapping Birds British Lines Collection Early Spring Shore Feeding Suburb Herring Girl Swell Pack. £15.95 is the price. And this product here was actually made sometime around March of 2021 before I left for college. And actually, it was my time here in college, guys. Eh? And I did this product, eh? There's six birds here. There's two scallops, two starfish, and a couple of dogfish sharks. Less of spotted ones, obviously, eh? And let's go ahead and unpack this. Obviously, very, very nice, eh? Ooh, that looks very, very cool, eh? And we're gonna go ahead and flap these birds, eh? And, um, whenever I look at these guys, they look quite nice, eh? And what's quite funny is that herring girl products are actually on the rise, whereas lots of black back girl products, they're actually declining. I don't know why, but, um, here you go. I've got those mixtures of silvery grey black backs with brown detailing on it though and the tail design is also quite nice as well same here as the other ones there that I've just made recently though quite interestingly enough though eh, we've seen you know, a mixture of having our products in sub adult and adult looking creatures though eh. it looks very very nice though eh. I can't believe it. we're getting a huge rise of very seagull products I believe though eh. I just can't believe it I could just go ahead and just talk of many seagull products it's so, so crazy seeing many of them. Many, many seagull products. It looks like the feet though, that's the other thing I need to consider about the feet detailing there. Pink legs. Obviously that. And, um, they are quite large girls though. Um, I don't know about you, but I think they're much bigger than the lesser flat back. Which is quite nice, obviously, though. Flat, flat, flat. Okay, I think I've seen enough there because I think they're going to be, you know, I don't know what I'm saying here, but I think it's going to be, you know, the exact same sort of colorization as I can think of, obviously, I eh? And, um, let's see what we have. Um, ooh, that looks quite nice, eh? And we've got a scallop, which looks quite small in that colorization here. Is that, is that red or pink? I can't remember, right? Eh? And we've also got a brown one. Obviously, eh? Yeah, that milk chocolate sort of brown color, eh? Not fully coloured in, but um, it does make for an awesome looking set, eh? 
which looks quite nice though, it's a special go. And it also comes with a couple of dogfish sharks, which in a sense, it looks like this. Okay, that looks quite, quite nice though. And we also have another one. It looks very, very nice, obviously, um, yeah, can't believe it. Though. It looks very, very cool in terms of the way toys have been detailed like that. Yeah, I just can't believe it, eh? And we've also got a couple of starfish, which in a sense is, this one here is a British pinkish one, and this one here is a, an orange one, obviously, and both of them have got like ochre back size, or bottom size, obviously, eh? And if you don't know what creature a starfish is, it's basically an, I don't know what it's called, an incarnatum? How do you pronounce this word? Incarnatum, or incarnaturms. I can't remember what they're called, eh? But they are. I, I did say the correct word, but I don't know what's the correct pronunciation of those creatures, eh? Actually, I'll take it back. I'm going to take a look at these herring girls again, though, to see if they're sub-adults. Obviously, what's very important to know is, is I've checked on all of these birds. They all say the name sub adult herring girl. So, yeah. There you go. That's that product done. I think, um, I've got to tell you what, eh? These girls are getting a lot more attention, though than the lesser blackbacks which is quite obviously surprising and whatever you think about today eh? I'm obviously pretty soon that um, that means you won't be able to see that many lesser blackback gold products obviously eh because of the new changes that we have so far eh and um go ahead and put these away and uh and take a look at what we've got Speaking of herring girls, once again, ooh, we've got pink beaks herring girl forms versus pink sea creatures 12 pack. 16.95. This almost feels like a girly product though. As you can tell, there's so much pink eye. And there's the back of the packaging, which looks like that. Comes with some dogfish, sharks, you know, shrimps, scallops, lobsters, edible crabs, and whatnot. Oh, goodness me. Very interesting stuff though, very interesting. You know, I just can't believe it though, this looks quite weird eh? And um, I don't know what form these girls are, those herring girls are, are they second winter or the third winter? I can't remember eh? Anyways, what you get though is a couple of creatures though, yes we all know we get like a starfish, a crab, a shark, a lobster, uh, a scallop, and there's also like stuff on it too. And I've just made the train derail by accident. Sorry, didn't mean that to happen, eh? Didn't mean that to happen. Like that one, eh? You just continue this train journey. Hopefully, it still works, eh? And um, let me just go ahead and unpack this and see what we have. Oh yes. And um, here we are. There's all the sea creatures here. We've got like a a lobster, just a very normal looking lobster, eh? With those very distorted looking eyes, they're quite freakish looking eyes. We've got a shrimp, or a prawn, and uh, we've got a scallop. I'm not going to show you these too much in full detail because the video will be staggered with so, so much fun being distilled and distracted there. With a train right next to me though. And uh, we've also got a shark, a dogfish shark. Which looks like that. Just a generic one, obviously, eh? And it's part of the British Wildlife Collection toy range. There's an edible crabby, eh? Which, in a sense, it looks like crabby from Pokemon, as you can tell by, you know, the artwork. And obviously, we've also got a starfish as well. Very, very nice. Very nice indeed. And let's take a look at. Oh, freaking train! Anyways, it's just. Oh, anyways, let's take all the out, eh? Ooh! That is a very different version of a herring girl in sub adult form. As you can tell, it's more of a pinkish sort of bird. Kind of bird with some pink legs and also the brown, dirty streak patterns there, and also the pink detailings on, on that part of the beak. With a yellow tip on the end there, which is quite unusual, eh? Also got another one of these. Oh, yes! Both of them have got brown tails, I would have preferred them if they had like black tails as well just to make them a little bit more accurate to what a sub-adult bird would look like though or a sub-adult girl obviously, same details on each side 
Then we've also got um, are these juveniles? Or are they just Oh wait, this one here is a second winter herring girl and this one is a third winter. Um I don't know about you, but uh, I would say this one is more second winter. I forgot to name this bird though, so um might as just go ahead and grab a pencil and just work something like so, eh? Um I'm not gonna do a jump cut because the video will be way too long there and just to get staggered there. But I am trying to keep up in pace. Oh my goodness, here are crockies. There you go, there's what I'm naming it. Second one's Herring Girl. And there you go, there's another one here. Um, there's a third winter one here, as you can tell. And obviously, if you can tell the difference between the third winter and the second winter Herring Girl, is that the second winter doesn't have any brown streaked patterns on its head there. And the other thing, look at this. This section of this bird here, the hump, obviously is a lot more silvery grey, whereas on the second winter, look at that, it's more brown. Okay, so you can start to see a whole bunch of differences along the way there. It's also a lot more greyer first than this one here. A lot more brown into it and then the grey. The grey sits on top. You can see it's quite a very weird, interesting difference in terms of how these birds have been detailed and designed. And I've got to tell what I have to say that after the Easter holidays, we might see a massive seagull roundup of flip-out products. Uh, oh, pardon me, I've just burnt. And, um, can't believe it, eh? Getting a huge amount of seagull themed products, though, with some parking in the background. Oh my god, I think, I don't know what I might do, though, but I just can't believe it, though. I'm doing so great, though. Um, let's take a look at something else, eh? Oh my god, it's quite a huge variety of Seagull got themed products, so I'm just going to grab, um, oh my goodness, I'm going to take all of that products there, just to make the most of it, eh? Alright, so let's start off this one here. Uh, wow, we're looking at sub at herring girls, and it's a competitive feeding flock 12 pack. And uh, it costs about £14.95, and the way to tell the difference between an adult and a sub adult is that sub adult herring girls are basically like adult herring girls in a breeding plumage. Or in the non bleeding plumage, but with brown streakings on either their tails or on their wings. It depends on how they're basically, you know, you know, in the way they molt their feathers, it's very dependable. Here you go, there's a herring girl trying to eat a freaking red starfish, and an orange one trying to eat a starfish. And there you go, that's a very curious and inquisitive looking herring girl. Right there as well. Same here as well, on the other side. On the Anatomy side of the Flipfabari Gummy Flapping Goods toys. And once again, we all know that they've come with bloody instructions at the back there. And just pretty much something a lot more mundane indeed. And obviously, I did hear there's some people arguing saying, Ah, oh, but Ivan, herring girls take like four or five years to basically like reach their adult plumage. Well, it is true. Obviously, there's different colours here. You've got purple, reddish pink. Maybe magenta, probably, and orange. And same with those ones there. All of them have got like yellow on the sides, which is very interesting, eh? Got some more hair from China. What's with that bloody hair on the floor here? Anyways, we've got some sub adult herring girls. I'm using the wingtip hasn't been finished off properly, though. I'm going to just smudge it, though. But, um, yeah, they look quite, quite nice. All of them have got the name sub adult herring girls, as I've checked before, eh? Yeah, that looks actually quite nice. And actually, they're one of the first of that products to be made with in Generation 122, which is like the generation that came after that Generation 121. It looks quite, quite nice. There we go. And I'll flap that one here. Very, very cool and strange enough. Very, very nice. Here's the other side. And um, yeah, that looks very, very good. Very good, eh? There's no brown tail at the end, though. But, um, yeah, I could decipher from that one out. And I can tell straight forward that the only difference is that I can see is that there's brown on the wings here. Can't believe it. That looks very, very... Wow, that is very quick, though. Very, very quick for a toy view, eh? There you go. I'm just going to shove them inside into the rudder air. I'm just doing really, really well. And the way I'm making... Is that products 
Now this, it's so, so amazing, eh? Here we go. Here we go, I'm just going to go ahead and just take a look at our nets for that here. This is a late summer herring girl, our um, feeding plot 12 pack. 15 pounds 94, I feel like I'm pretty much hydrated there. There's the back of the packaging here. There's, oh, it's so, so nice there. There you go, there's some, um, are these sea bass? I believe that's sea bass. And um, that looks very nice though. Bit of a mundane set. And um, yeah. Quite interesting. That. It's actually, it's exact, oh my god, it's actually the same exact listing as all. But there, oh, what we have there. Oh, I didn't realize there was some juvenile herring guys here. Added it into the equation. But what's quite strange is, there's some juvenile herring girls on the background and on the letter O, but I'm not sure if you can see that. It's not very clear on the picture there, but you can just see that there's a couple of juvenile herring girls there. Which you thought was going to be almost exactly similar, but um, there we go. It looks very, very nice. Thought it was going to be a very different product, eh? It's going to be exactly similar to the herring girls that feed on the mackerel, but um, luckily enough this time, no, 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 no. And we've got more of these, eh? Oh, it's not very, very nice little times, eh? Ooh, a lovely flapping actions from these girls here, and we've got like, uh, that's a, a herring girl, that's an adult herring girl. Same with this one here. Obviously, there's no brown streaking on the wings or on the head. As you can tell, this is a summer adult herring girl. Typical, isn't it, eh? That detailing, eh? And this one here doesn't have a name, but obviously, I can relate to the fact that this is just just a normal herring girl, eh? And obviously, I'm just going to put it up, you know, with a pencil. I'm just going to write the name here, write the name herring girl. There you go. There you go. That looks better, eh? It's quite, quite nice, eh? It also comes with some sea bass. Hmm. I can show you that one easily. Looks like they've got the stood faces there. I wonder what's up with these small flip up origami fishy models, eh? They just look so, so, well, fishy. Hmm. <laughs> Not the pun, eh? But, um, looking quite small. And then, uh, whenever I think about these guys, they, don't, they just don't look too bad, eh? At the moment, eh? They look very, very nice. They're quite small. And um, the first time, I don't know if Flip Flap's running out a lot of ideas though, for the fact that we're just making too many cigar products though. And um, I'm just pretty much curious in a way. And now these fishies have been, you know, designed and whatnot and stuff like that one, eh? It's quite weird, eh? Like, you know, whenever I do Flip Flap toys like this, oh, that's lovely. It's quite interesting. Yeah, sometimes these small, intricate-looking components, they're not that detailed that well, though. Oh, well. I suppose that's quite a good product here as well. Well, at least it's not copying all the other flat products that I did in the past. I took a very different direction. Maybe apart from the fact I was copying those lesser black bat girls before line, but it's a totally different species of girl. Totally different specimen, obviously. There we go, there's that product done here, right? And we're going to take a look at, I don't know, I'm just going to put it here. This one here. Um, ooh, these are swimming herring girls, feeding and fishing in an underwater 12 pack. Once again, there's a general 122 product. Uh, as you can tell from, oh sorry, I've just broke, eh? By the generation itself, 122. £17.95 is the price. If I'll show you closely there, there you go, in the back here, it's got some more artwork here. And what's very interesting is we've got a picture of a herring girl swimming. Very interesting. And it's not a flapping birds product because there are no instructions on how to flap the birds because the models are in fact just pictures or in fact just models of seagulls just swimming. And whenever you think of seagulls, they just don't need to swim. They can just fly about in the air in search of food. Excellent and very versatile looking scavengers, these guys are. They are scavengers. There you go, they've got the name Herringo on them here. 
very very nice and obviously they share the same detail in English as what I did in previous videos obviously I am just running out of ideas maybe I could just start and doing you know cigar merchandise and just become a millionaire though you know I could just do a whole bunch of cigar products and just relate to the fact that I'm just pretty much a fan I'm pretty much a person who's accustomed onto cigars eh because obviously these guys they've been pretty much misunderstood as a pest in land there but there you go there's some fishies here we've got a couple of what three pieces of mackerel and there's the other one here as well we've got very weird blue eyes there I don't know why and we've also got some sardines by the way it looks like it's a lot more like it's smiling actually do we have more sardines inside here um maybe not though I had a look at what we had recently though I've checked everywhere Checked all of what we have inside there, and I just couldn't find. Um, well, hang on, there we go. We've got a third sardine, we've got another sardine like that. That's a third one. Oh, sorry, I just nearly got you know, my hook up perch just taken down by the train. There you go. We've got a little sardine here, which looks very, very nice. Very weird looking eyes as well, obviously. Mm -mm -mm. Very, very cool. Oh, ow! Oh my, oh my god, my, um... Oh god, I think whenever I bend my knees, it's starting to hurt me. Ow, ow, ow. Oh, I can't do the review better than that one, eh? I can't do that. Oh god. Painful. I think this has got to be the most agonizing of all with up toys. I've done so much, though. Because I just keep on bending my knees and doing stuff like that, which is not very normal. Anyways, we're going to take a look at a, another seagull product. It is a free breeding herring gull fishing flock 12 pack. 14 pounds. And um, we've got some fishies by some splats. Very interesting. And we're going to go ahead and take a look what we have. And uh, see what we have. Oh, wait. Hang on, are these? Oh, uh, at least they're not like, you know, something else, hey? Right? We've got some splats which look like that I mean um, yeah it's quite interesting though very interesting enough I would usually see splats in a much more dark yellow colour and a lot more greyish in colour as well eh? Uh, I don't know how sloppy the painting is there or the the way the models have been detailed and designed it's quite very weird eyes on those ones there and as I said earlier though it's very hard to pull off very good intricate looking designs and details on small toys let's take a look at the seagulls next and ooh do you see something pretty amazing do you see something pretty rare there's that little black ring on the ball there which looks quite quite amazing though and whenever I think about those black rings on the front though it makes me quite confused for the fact that oh it's a sub adult herring girl I should have put the word winter because I've got those brown streakings in the head. What's quite funny is, is that whenever I look at the ring, whenever I look at the front black ring on the middle there, well, not on the middle actually, eh? Reminds me of a ring build girl from North America, obviously, with that kind of detailing and design. There you go. And we've also got a couple of herring girls which are in their adult forms, like so. Just mundane adult herring girls, at least we don't have six like the mackerel ones that we had before, eh? There we go. That's quite shonky and wonky looking wings on that herring girl, eh? And we'll try and flatten the one here. Oh my god, eh? Oh god! That's me, I just sneezed, though. Hopefully it's not COVID. And I also love that artwork, though, with that seagull soaring into the sky while relaxing at the beach. Pretty amazing, eh? Quite a good perspective view of seagulls soaring and hovering in the air, ready to basically um, pilfer at your meal day. <laughs> you know the word pilfer means to steal. Oh goodness me! And um, I'll tell you what, eh? These guys—they look so so cool. I mean, the other thing, whenever I, I see seagulls, you know, in Birmingham, they it feels less appropriate though because obviously you know whenever I think of towns and cities 
they are, uh, you know, they're actually quite a great place for seagulls. It's an opportunistic area to find food there. It's a lot more easier there for them to go ahead and gobble as much food as possible there. Anyways, that's that product done. Next up is this one here, Wintering Subadult Herring Gulf Lock Top Pack. It's a new 122, and it costs about £16.95. And look at that. Ooh, that's a very cartoon looking seagull there. Just Looks like he's slipped over and just doing a really weird cartoon in way to say hello or goodbye. And um, there's the back of the packaging here. We've got some more extra seagulls though. I believe they're in their winter plumage. Which is quite interesting obviously, except for this one here. Uh, it's quite very weird, didn't have time to detail it one way. And there's two of these guys inside here, which is quite amazing. Eh? You've got a very weird picture of a seagull there on the letter O. Pretty much a common feature on doing products like that one, eh? And uh, let's see what we'll have. That is just amazing, eh? That is just freaking amazing, eh? We've got a lot of sub adult coming girls there, all of them in their yellow beaks. And obviously, they just keep on showing the same design. I would have preferred that there was a lot more effort on just putting much different details in the design, eh? Because you know, it's not just one bird having the same sort of design, but there's actually quite more and more and more extra details on them here. Yeah? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's so wonky looking at those large herringos. This one's looking like the wings have... Ooh, it doesn't look good. I need to trim that. It doesn't look good, eh? Um, but at least it's not too bad, though. And if I think of the way I've made these seagulls, eh? And, yeah, they look actually not too bad. Not too bad indeed. I'm trying to be very careful of this webcam though because obviously you're getting a whole bunch of D-rollers though and also the fact that the camera has been taped heavily though for the fact that the camera is at risk of getting damaged and stuff like that one eh? There you go, flat, flat, flat. Very nice looking deep wing beats though. Quite interesting eh? A little bit of an unbalanced feel, as you can tell with these large gull wings. A lot more, well, just say, a lot more brash and brutal looking, those very deep looking wing beats, though. Quite lazy as well than those black headed gulls. It feels like I haven't been making them for a long time, though, because they're just left to their breeding colonies, though. Might be able to see them at some time in the future, eh? Maybe during, like, you know, whenever I go to, like, you know, various places. And we've got a helicopter right behind me there. It looks like it's... Yeah, I do hear some very weird strange noises whenever I'm doing toy views and things like that, eh? There we go. Brown streak patches on the head. Oh my god, eh? I feel like I'm just gonna... Oh my god, eh? Oh my god, I'm doing so, so well, eh? And also, it's very weird to note that they've also got bright pink legs. And in fact, it's more like hot pink legs, which look like that, I believe, though. Same as the other side, eh? And it's a lot more brighter than what I did with the other product that I did before, eh? Um, yeah. I actually can't believe it, obviously, eh? Now, let's go ahead and take a look at something else. Speaking of seagulls, look at this. We've also got this. This is a summer... 2021, um, is that like a Christmas decoration or is it like maybe something that you can hang on the door or something, eh? I made this at college back in Christmas time. And it comes like a herring girl just about to sit on a beach ball. And there's another picture of a herring girl just flying away there. Nice sunshine with those palm trees there at the distance there. And I also love the colours as well. Summer 2021. Very awesome, and I do love um, the attraction of this piece of merchandise, eh? Looks quite nice, appropriately silver grey looking back, though. Very, very cool looking, obviously, eh? Very nice. And we've also come from... Are these ice creams, eh? Is that like a pair of ice cream? That's normally that you tend to feel like in the summer, eh? You know, whenever I think of summer, it's one of the best seasons to have a go, eh? Quite a nice looking scenery eh? with the sea and the ocean and all that stuff. Hey, I gotta tell you, what do you think? It looks, to me, it looks very, very beautiful. 
and brightly coloured. I love the fact that the colours, they look more like, you know, it's quite amazing though. Very dizzy looking colours though, those bright, jagged looking colours though. Uh, I've got to tell what I eh? all that brightness on that um, product eh? There's the other side of it, not much big coming eh? And this, that looks so, so much better eh? So, so much better. Lovely big coming eh? Alright, and we've got two more flip-up products left at the moment eh? Actually, I might bring in the Scarlet product here because I want to go ahead and finish up the video eh? Whenever I'm making videos like this. Ooh! This one here, there's no boots here, but it is a British one of collection product, which is actually strange enough. I should have just placed that one though. Um, you go to put in the northern little green uh, court shipping and feeding dual pair five pack. And there's the back of the packaging here, which looks like that. And it's supposed to be a British one of collection product because, well, obviously, let me just go ahead and do it now. Because obviously, well, I'll tell you, there's quite a lot of reasons saying I forgot to do this. And I was a bit too lazy today. But, um, they live in the UK, that's the main reason why I have to classify them as a British wildlife collection toy product, say, because obviously, little breeds are found across the UK. This is in Tyscope for you. And I'm just taking this video for quite, kind of a way longer time to produce this. And um anyways, it looks quite weird, eh? I'm just I'm not gonna do any jump cuts though, because obviously if I'm doing any jump cuts, well um yeah. I just can't believe that whenever I'm making videos like this these days though, it's quite interesting though. Like I mean, whenever I do videos like this, the attention span data is just chronically low. Like I mean People just go ahead and just, you know, whenever I'm making videos like this, as I'm putting information onto the packaging there, on the little weeds, um, I can tell you what, it's sad that people just don't watch videos for a long time now, like, you know, two to three minutes, only five minutes there, with the real maximum there. And I've got a constant problem with attention spam data on my YouTube channel, which is pretty much sad though, but anyways, there you go, I've just added some detail in there, part of the British Wildlife Collection Toy Range. There you go, it's small, I'm not sure if you can see that one out. There you go, but it's what the And obviously these guys are found in the UK. Once you can touch back there's a couple of carp here, a couple of little greaves, and there's a stick or a tree branch, which is quite nice. There's a bit of scenery. When you go to these wetland reserves in the UK, you know, it looks very, very nice. Must be of a canoe or a kayak or a rowing boat or something like that one, eh? It looks quite very nice, eh? And, um, there we go. Let's take some of these guys out, anyway. Oh, that's a very wonky looking beak. There you go, there's one of the cops here. Magic coat, coat, magic coat. And we're gonna go ahead and grab another one of those. There's another magic cop. There's two of them here. It's one of these fishies that was slapping in the face after catching them. <laughs> Quite weird, eh? That yeah, looks very, very nice, actually. And, um, yeah. Very, very nice. They're just small little flies of a carp. And I gotta tell you, they look quite, quite nice. It's missing the barbels that you find an actual carp. I believe they have whiskers or barbels on the front. Which is pretty much missing on all these carp themed products, eh? And I gotta tell you, they look. Pretty amazing, eh? Oh yeah! And I think I'm not going to attach the cob onto the greaves because the video will be way too long, eh? Anyways, let me take a look at the little greaves. And I haven't seen these birds, though, but I did see bigger great crested greaves before, though. So the fact that great crested greaves were pretty much common, though, after, you know, for the fact that, you know, they've been highly protected from the RSPB, you know, they were threatened for the fact that their feather tubs would have been perfect for fashion and handbags and all that things. Uh, but these are the little greaves, which are like small water birds belonging to a family of duck like water birds called greaves. And uh, they're like small cormorants. Um, but they're, you know, you know what I'm thinking of, hey guys, eh? And obviously, whenever I think about these little greaves, they've got rufous reddish orangey looking nips. 
Like so. I think I might be able to spot them. I haven't seen these boots here, but I might be able to go to Witten Lakes. Because the lockdown restrictions have been eased so, so far though, in those virus times. As I've been making videos like this. You know, i got to tell you what, it might be quite interesting to just go ahead and, you know, head straight forward to Witten. Which is, you know, right on front of Aston Villa, I believe so. And just take a look at these little greaves. Oh my goodness, what I'm saying here. Might be able to see these little greaves on my way walk to Witten, which will be quite amazing, no? There's a couple of lakes here, which would be basically nice, so I definitely say, eh? And, um, yeah, that looks obviously quite nice, I believe so, eh? Very, very nice. And, uh, let's go ahead and move on to our last clip up product, eh? Which, in a sense, will be all about cops! Magic cop, cop, magic cop! Well, they're not really magic cops, it's a semi ballistic common European cop show. 12 pack, 14 pounds 95. Well, there you go. There's different styles of cops here. Literally the same species of fish, the different art styles, all are coloured in the same appearance. I believe that's what common carp look like, by the way. And these guys, whenever you think about them, they're actually quite vulnerable to not just hot weather, but also stormy weather. Which is pretty interesting for fishies like that, but it does sound scary, obviously, eh? You know, quite very sloppy there, a bit messy there, very messy detailing is there. But, um, yeah, that's how would a cop would look like though. I think the only thing to make these guys a lot more better is that, is that I could have came in and just put licensing info on them. Which would have been much more better than I would actually expect, eh? Lovely colour contrast of greenish yellow onto them, eh, to make them a lot more realistic. Here's the other one there. It's pretty much for the fact that I've seen dozens of carp in Aloe Valley like in Redditch last year in the summer. When I was busy, you know, feeding birds and I've also seen people busily feeding birds. I've just seen them for a eh? quite nice details eh, on these common carps. Very, very nice eh. Very nice. And we've also got another one here. Therefore I love, whenever I look at freshwater fish and fish of all kinds of different shapes and colours so it makes me feel just calm and relaxed so very very nice magic coat coat magic coat and look at that they just go slap 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 in your face yeah, especially that one moment there was that scene in you've been frame where someone just gets slapped on the face by a cart you know, that looks very very nice eh and uh, I gotta tell you what these guys they look quite quite nice and um, my goodness me, I've seen big carps like, you know, before, eh? I've never eaten carp, but um, they look quite nice. Very nice looking fish. Well, I've got to tell you what, that's pretty much all I can say, eh? That's pretty much done. And I've got to tell you what, I thought I won't be able to go ahead and do two reviews like this before, you know, in April, I guess in the near future. But I've got to tell you what. There'll be more coming up sooner or later, eh? Which will be great, obviously, though, because I can tell you what, though, even though it's been quite an arduous task for this April, it's been quite interesting, though. Like, I just can't believe it, though. So there you go. That's this toy view done. My goodness me. I just can't believe I just got myself into a bit of a challenge just to suffer on just doing toy views like this, because I've got to tell you what, it's been quite hard for me to just go ahead and just do actual toy reviews though throughout the rest of this Easter day. I just can't believe it. Like, I mean, it's so unbelievable now. You know, I just, I just did the, I don't know what I'm saying here, but for the fact that I must have been into what it looks like to be a long hiatus throughout the rest of my time in, back at college though, at residential though, um, yeah, it's been very, very long though. But anyways, if you have enjoyed my time on just me suffering on doing toy reviews like this, please give this video a great big like and subscribe for more content in the future on my YouTube channel. And I'm very sorry for taking so long for not going ahead and just doing actual toy reviews on my YouTube channel. And I tell you what, it's been pretty much so, so long now. Like, you know. It's so, so weird these days. Like, I just can't believe it. I've just made, like, a massive bombshell of just that products. Like so. Anyways, 
Hope you've enjoyed it. It certainly was a great pile of flip up toys to take a look at indeed. As always, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for your time and goodbye for now. Bye.